I found somebody I really want you guys to meet. And somebody that really can help shed some light on a lot of the science behind the microbiome, where the industry is going. Um, I, when I was in Dallas last year, I had the incredible opportunity to run into a, a, a doctor of microbiology who actually specialized in probiotics and the microbiome. And so I've actually, over the course of the year, um, been able to, to read a lot of her information, learn a lot about the microbiome, probiotics, how it relates to our health, both from the inside and the outside. And I've invited her to come along with us today. Oh, P.S., she's also a gold consultant with Truora. So I'd like, to, I'd like you all to welcome to the stage Dr. Karina Kaplan. All right. How are you? So Karina was kind enough. I've got to tell you a funny story. Um, Rick, I, we were, I flew out here a few weeks ago. We were having a meeting, um, looking at all the people who were speaking on panels and things like that, and I saw that Karina was on a panel for promotions. And I pulled Rick aside and I said, oh no, I need, I need Karina. So, Karina was kind enough to shift midstream and actually come over and, and, and help me out with this part of the presentation. So, thank you so much for being flexible and working with this wacky crew. Um, thank you for having me. So, Karina, can you just tell everyone a little bit about your, your history is so interesting, your background. Can you just tell everybody about your background and what led you into the field of the microbiome? And yes, of course. I'd love to. I actually started my scientific career in my home country, in Lithuania. So I'm from overseas, and um, I started it in about 2002, I guess, uh, working on bacteriocins, and I'm sure you know what they are. Yeah. They're antimicrobial peptides that bacteria secrete, and I was extremely fascinated by this research. And then I was, uh, when I got my master's, I was extremely lucky to be invited to do um, PhD in Ireland and in one of the biggest, really, microbiome centers yeah. today. It used to be called Elementary Pharmabiotic Center, now it's Microbiome Institute, and they're really head of, um, you know, all the science yeah. out there. So um, I was really fortunate to work with great scientists and investigate probiotics and prebiotics and how those prebiotics affect and probiotics affect our health. Um, and then, and then I was, again, very fortunate. I'm such a lucky person, really, and grateful. Uh, I was invited to Texas A&M to continue my research in this field, and then I was invited to Houston, to Baylor College of Medicine, and continue working with Dr. Vesalovic and, and his team on, again, microbiome and probiotics. So I'm extremely passionate about this topic, so much that after I left the lab, I couldn't just give up, and, and I decided to tell the world. Actually, my now followers encouraged me to start a blog, My Gut Matters, and that's, that's my long story to, you know, to okay. in short, a <laughs> few sentences. That's fantastic. So, so what made you, I know you probably weren't, you, know, you weren't necessarily thinking direct sales direction, but what brought you to Truora? What was the... the, the yeah. convincing factor there. Yeah, so um, so people saw me as a PhD in microbiology and in this field of microbiome, and um, a lot of the followers uh, have been asking me about healthy products and about products that would um, really promote microbiome. And, um, and for a few years, I couldn't really recommend any good uh, skincare. I mean, there, there were, don't take me wrong, there are great uh, skincare out there, but um, there was just something not enough for me to, to recommend. And um, there were some probiotic um, uh, ingredients containing skincare, but there was something else that kind of was um, negating the effect um, of, of those probiotics. So, um, and then a good friend of mine actually introduced me to another no, um, friend of mine. Um, who um, started working on a probiotic skincare, and that's how everything probiotic is very interesting to me. So I um, got really interested and, and decided to research. And then, of course, I did a lot of research, and you know that I emailed you I quite mean. a few times trying to get as much information as I could to make sure 
uh, it is what it is you're saying. So, um, so yeah, it just uh, really feed great into my repertoire of um, products that I recommend and also it just fits my ideology of a, you know, healthy microbiome yeah. overall. Good, I love that. So speaking of the microbiome, where do you really see the future of the microbiome industry going? I know that we've kind of, you know, we've really, it, it's been around for a while mm -hmm. and we've been focused primarily on our internal health. Um, the skin microbiome is a new trend, of course, as Britt mentioned with the Dove and a lot of other brands that are starting to come out of Johnson & Johnson is now working on a baby line that focuses on the microbiome. So we're gonna start seeing in the next year or two so much more um, development in this area. Where do you see it from a scientific standpoint going? Well, uh, for a long time we were really, with this uh, latest technology, genomics, uh, uh, that we have around gen genetic tools, uh, metagenomics, we finally um, now understand and know who lives in us and on us. Uh, we know who these players are and uh, what those bacteria uh, bacteria are. Um, there are trillions of bacteria, and you know you probably know all that. And and we're about 50% bacterial, really, right. rather than <laughs> human. And uh, if we look at the genetics, actually, uh, and genetics is what it's it's our function, right? It's what these microbes do. Um, genetically, we 99% microbial and only 1% human. So if you collect all those genes from all these bacteria that are in and on us, you get a tremendous amount of genes. So what now scientists are trying to do is really focus on, on the function and trying to understand. Now we know who is there, but what they are doing, that's what we don't know yet. Also, until recently, um, a lot of the research has been focusing on uh, looking at the disease state and uh, what can we do to treat the disease or maybe prevent the disease. But now scientists are actually talking about what about health? Why not to actually think about how we can promote health and just be healthy? Yeah. You don't have to wait until you have the disease to treat it or be afraid that you, you're going to get it. Just um, what is healthy microbiome? Yeah. and and. and trying to understand metabolites, right? Um, metabolites are, you know, those little molecules that this bacteria is secreting, and, and those molecules do something in our body. So that's what really scientists are trying to do. Okay. Yeah, it's, fa I mean, it's a fascinating um, movement, and, um, and it's, it's knowledge is power, and I, you know, mm -hmm. I think the more we know about the composition of our bodies, you know, the, the, be the better we can mitigate Exactly. disease and, and stay healthy. So, so many people, I mean, every, of course, everyone in this room knows about the microbiome, but, you know, because we've talked about it for two years now. Um, but, the, but the general consumer probably isn't aware. And I know many people we run into and on a day-to-day -day basis probably have never heard microbiome. In layman's terms, what would you say, how would you say to someone who was completely a microbiome virgin, you know? What would you say to them to let them know what the microbiome is, how it works, and more importantly, why is Truora is such an important part of their yeah. life? Um, so, um, first of all, I would probably try to explain what microbiome is. And microbiome is really the collection of all the microbial cells that live in our body and on our body. Um, and then uh, I would talk a little bit about you know, how to maintain them. And they talk about the diversity. The diversity of those microbes is extremely important. And to make sure you have a diverse microbiome, so basically um, to make sure that you have a lot of different types of bacteria is the key to the health. And to do that, you need to have a healthy diet. It's like a garden, you know, in your body. Um, so it's a mutual, in, in mutual, it's a mutual interest to kind of uh, take care of each other, right? So you, um, when you have a great garden that gives you lots of harvest, you're, it makes you happy and healthy, right? You have all this fruit. And for garden, it's good when you're taking care of it, when you fertilize it, when you water it. So imagine that these microbes in you and on you is basically a garden that you need to take care of. Because as long as you're gonna take care of it, 
is going to take care of you back. And, and, you know, a lot of us have heard we are what we eat. Right. So this is true, absolutely. Our gut, gut microbiota and in general gut health is extremely important for our health. But a lot of people get so focused on, on just food that they forget about all other environmental triggers. And even gut microbiome um, is dependent not only on the food, but also on what we put on our skin, what we wash our skin with, what, we're, what air we're breathing, what mm -hmm. we're cleaning our house with, yeah. and it's, it really goes beyond that, how, how, how much we exercise. Uh, so all those factors are important, that's why, and our skin is our largest organ. Right. So we really need to maintain, um, maintain it and make sure um, that our microbes are happy on our skin because th they're our little warriors that are yeah. gonna protect us from all the environmental triggers. So, you, you mentioned briefly the, the, the gut microbiome and the skin. What is the relationship between a healthy gut microbiome? Because you know, as we know, it's not just about what we put on our skin, it's about what we yeah. put into our bodies. So, what, is the, what are the benefits to our skin of taking care of our internal microbiome? Well, um, microbiome really is linked to pretty much any organ in our body. Now that a lot of the scientists all over the world uh, are working on it, and we know that not only it helps the digestion, um, but it really strengthens our um, intestinal barrier. Um, and by strengthening intestinal barrier, it, it doesn't let any toxins through or any, any bad stuff that we're consuming with fast food and uh, Western diet in general. So, um, and, and that, really uh, is linked to our, uh, to our skin. Um, because our skin is a filtration our, system. Exactly, yeah. So, um, but when we have a disrupted microbiome in the gut, then it can also influence our health skin and the microbiome on the skin. And um, skin microbiome, I'm sure you know, have been um, correlated to a lot of different skin disorders. We know that, for example, if a person has acne, there is usually um, more propionic bacterium um, acne in, the, in those areas, right? right? If, if a person has eczema, there is more Staphylococcus aureus on the skin than healthy skin has. So, uh, so all these things are interconnected, and, and gut microbiome really plays a huge role uh, in in immune function, in our central nervous system function, in our cognitive, uh, in memory, in, yeah. in heart disease, in, in taking care and managing our metabolism, cholesterol, and you, you just name it, pretty much. There, there is some sort of connection of okay. gut microbiome to any of these functions. That's good. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I know I, I recently, especially after speaking with you, we re I recently, um, we've cleaned up our, our house as it relates to um, the products we wash our clothes with, you know, yeah. laundry soaps, you know, any, any kind of products that come, we come close to our skin, um, but also on our food. You know, mm -hmm. we've really put, focused on clean, organic uh, living. I've noticed a huge difference in the quality of my, my, my skin and yeah. my health as well. Um, so, yeah, you're exactly right. So, uh, one question that I heard somebody ask me the other day um, is someone said, okay, you know what? I'm seven years old. I've not, you know, I've not used any of these products. I'm probably too old to start right now. You know, can, can you be too old to start really focusing on the microbiome? No, you can't. Okay. Uh, it depends, obviously, on what kind of quality of life you want to have. Yeah. And if you want to have a good quality of life, good memory, have a lot of energy, uh, then it's never, you're never too old. But of course, the the earlier you start, the the better. It is. Yeah, good. Last question. Um, so if, if you, when you talk to people about taking care of themselves, what would be some advice you, because I, I firmly believe in walking the walk, talking the talk. You know, so what advice would you give to, to everyone in our audience and everyone watching at home? You know, what would you, what would you recommend to help with their overall health of their microbiome? Mm -hmm. um, of course, so number one, of course, is the diet. Yeah. So, and uh, scientists who are researching the diet believe that the Mediterranean diet is probably one of the best, more balanced diets out there that has the diversity of different vegetables, fruit, berries, basically plants. It also has fish, 
uh, with omega-3 oils that are extremely beneficial for gut microbiome. And all those plants have a lot of polyphenols that are not only antioxidants, but they're also very beneficial for the diversity of the microbiome. So the Mediterranean diet, also uh, any other plant-based diets really perform the same way as Mediterranean diet, whether you're a vegan or vegetarian or, um, and actually one of the latest research by Dr. Rob Knight um, was done um, when they looked at the microbiomes of different people and they uh, looked at their food journals and they found that those people who ate 30, veg 30 plants a week actually had a more diverse microbiome than those who ate 10 and less. So again, the takeaway from here, the more different types of plants you have, the better it is. And of course, omega-3, as I mentioned, um, polyphenols, Fermented foods are extremely good. Uh, also, one of the latest research, um, um, I think it's Japanese, uh, a Japanese group who looked at women who took yogurt every single day, and they found not only great improvement in their digestive system, but also their skin. So, you know, probiotics that you can uh, take with food can be extremely um, beneficial as well for the quality of your skin. Well, that's good. I, and I, also... I, I hate to say this, but we've been counting plants in a week. Oh, really? We, we keep a food journal. It's like, we've got to okay. get those 30 <laughs> different plants. <laughs> well, don't get stuck on the number. Just try I, to... I was actually going to ask you, could you give me what 30 of those need to be? <laughs> no, it, it, it's not really necessary to count them, but just thrive to, to you know, diversify and increase <laughs> the plants. Also, stress is a huge factor. So stress management uh, affects directly our gut microbiome composition. So. You can do all these healthy things, but always be nervous and worried and stressed, and it might go all for nothing. Then sleeping is important, and exercising actually also improves your microbiome. So all those things that are usually are good for your heart and overall health are really good for your microbiome as well. Okay. Did you guys learn a lot? <laughs> all right. You know, um, one of, my, one of my favorite things to do is actually to go on to, K to Katrina, K Karina's. Karina, I know what it is, Karina, I'm sorry, okay. Karina's blog, which is called mygutmatters.com. Um, so please, you guys, I mean, if you really are interested in learning more about them, she gives great recipes for how to make your own fermented food, your own probiotic things to really support a healthy diet. She gives great recommendations for products that, you know, you, if you're looking for a great probiotic, I, I mean, she's, I would trust her more than I would most people about giving you great recommendations, but there's great articles and great in information. Please log on and subscribe to her blog because it's just a continuing education that Karina does all the work for us, and, it, and it's really an amazing thing. So give Karina a great round of applause. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>